Remember, uh, think about that word testimony. The first part of that word is test, isn't it? And so if you're going through a test, don't, don't let that upset you. Just uh, raise, lift your hands to God and say, praise God, you're just building a testimony in my life. And by faith, I'm going to get through this victorious as I put my faith in you. I've said it many times. We have enough ammonies. Uh, we, we, what we need are testimonies where, you know, God's power has gotten us through and we believed God. Amen. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, one translation says the title deed of things not seen. And so if you inherited a, a, a piece of property from some uh, wealthy relative and you found out about it, you knew it was yours because you were named in the will, that will is probated and it belongs to you and you get the deed to that property, that, that's, that's like faith. You got the title deed, but you may not have even seen the property. You may not have set foot on it, but you know you're going to. And it's yours. It belongs to you. You know, that's the way we need to be about the promises of God. We need uh, for our healing, for example. We got the title deed for our healing. By His stripes we were healed. We need to believe it. It belongs to us. And we're going to set foot on that land of divine health and walk in it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So a faith is the substance, the title deed of things hoped for. Well, we need hope too, don't we? Without hope, faith is the substance of nothing. So we, we need hope. Hope from a biblical point of view is a very positive word. The world uses hope in a very weak way. You might say, well, I'll, I'll be praying for you that you get better. Well, I hope so. You know, we, that's, that's the, the world uses that word hope in, a, in an unbiblical way. You know, uh, the Bible says Abraham had to change his hope. He went from a worldly hope to a biblical hope, which means confident expectation in God. Amen. So we've got that confident expectation. It's like the spiritual compass of our Christian walk. It, it points us in the right direction. It's like the uh, uh, electrical cord that connects us to the power source. And our power source is the Holy Spirit, but faith is the switch that turns it on. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, you, know, you got that confident expectation that God's going to get you through that situation victoriously. But you, you've got to believe it and turn that switch on and act like it. Amen. I read a story about this community that hadn't had rain in a long time. So they gathered on the, the uh, courthouse. They gathered people from different denominations and all, and they were all going to pray for rain. And they got out there, you know, made their speeches and uh, brought their religious symbols out there and everything and prayed and prayed and uh, nothing happened. And this little boy that heard about it, he decided he was going to pray for rain. And so the next day he shows up at the courthouse and he begins to pray with that childlike faith. And he hears, uh, hears some thunder in the distance and a cloud starts appearing. And then this little boy, he had an umbrella with him. And he took that umbrella out and popped it up. <laughs> you know, uh, that was his symbol of faith. He believed that God was going to hear his prayer and cause it to rain. And he brought an umbrella. None of the people at the prayer meeting the night before brought umbrellas, but this little boy had an umbrella and it rained after his prayer. Amen. That, you know, that's, that's what faith is. That's when you show up with an umbrella. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. That means that faith involves action. We walk by faith. We don't just talk the talk. That's important. But we also need to walk the walk. Cement has to be mixed with sand and water in order to become concrete, doesn't it? Well, our faith needs to be mixed with action. Bible-directed directed action in order for God to make concrete in our lives and give us that solid foundation that he wants us to have. Amen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony that was, in, you know, encouraged all those around them that they didn't give up. 
Amen. I uh, read a, a story, a true story, about a man who uh, he was a missionary. And he went to this remote island. Forgive me, I can't remember the name of the island. But he was, his objective was to interpret the Bible in the people's language. They had no Bibles in their language. So he was uh, busy. He had him, uh, he was living in a little hut. It was an agricultural uh, economy on that island. And he was in there working away on his translation of the Bible into their language. And he could not find a word in their language for faith. And a man who had gotten to know him that was a farmer there, he uh, came into his office there in his place and he was just, you know, had sweat. He'd been working out in the field and he came in and plopped down in the chair and he told the missionary, he said, oh, it's just so good to put my whole weight on this chair. And the missionary said, that's it. That's the word I'll use for faith. The word he used for putting his whole weight on that chair. And that's the way we, one way we activate our faith. We just lean back on God and follow His direction. Amen. Don't put the weight on our emotions. Uh, put, the, put the weight on God and lean on His Word and believe Him and trust in Him. Amen. In the Old Testament, the word trust is, we used to see the word believe being used in the New Covenant a lot. In the Old Covenant, you see the word trust used. And, and they both were... were speak of the same thing. In the, the Greek word for believe is the word pistuo, which means literally to lean on, to, to uh, put your trust in. And so when we say we believe in Jesus, we're saying more than we believe in His existence. James, I believe, even said the demons believe in Him, you know, from the viewpoint they know He exists. But when we say believe that we believe in Jesus, we're, we're saying more than we believe in His existence. We're saying that we trust in Him. That we're, we're leaning on Him with everything we have because He is our God. Amen. So for, by it the elders obtained a, a good testimony. I was, uh, you know, talking about uh, putting action with our faith. I read a story about a little girl. She was on the upper story in a building and the building was burning and uh, she was out on the balcony and the firemen were down below and they were saying jump 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 we'll catch you but there was so much smoke she couldn't this little girl couldn't see who it was that was saying jump and she didn't know whether to jump or whether they were able to catch her or not and then she heard another voice saying jump darling this is daddy jump I'll catch you and the little girl then, without hesitation, she jumped off the balcony and her, her dad, you know, helped him catch her. But that's the way it is. You know, we need, to, we need to listen to the voice of our Father in heaven and know that when He tells us uh, through His Word or through that still, small voice, uh, uh, we need to know that we can trust in Him and we can jump into His arms and follow His directions. We don't have to be afraid. He loves us with a perfect love. And perfect love cast out fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read the next verse. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And so we know that, you know, when you read in Genesis, God spoke and the heavens and the earth were created. God is so powerful, He just speaks and, and things are created. Uh, things that uh, are visible were created, uh, were not made of things that are visible. Amen? Came from an invisible realm that we can't see. And it's still the same today. Faith, uh, faith calls the things that be not as though they are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Faith says, calls the things that be not as though they are. We need to pay, let's talk about that verse. I, I didn't intend to go into that, but let's talk about that verse for a minute. Some Christians have that mixed up. They think that faith calls the things that are as though they be not. But it calls the things, but it doesn't. Faith calls the things that be not as though they are. Now, this can keep you from getting into a kind of a cult belief system 
if we pay attention to those verses. For example, there's some cults that uh, they believe the way they get healed by saying they're not sick. You know, you, but if your arm's broken, you don't get healed by going around saying, my arm's not broken, my arm's not broken. That doesn't impress God or anybody else. But there are cults that believe that's the way you receive your healing. No, faith calls the things that be not as though they are. And so if your arm's broken, what is it that be not? A mended arm, a healed arm. So what do you call for? Healing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't go around saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. You go around saying, God, I ask you to heal me by your stripes. The work's already been done. I ask that it be manifested in my body, in my life, now, in Jesus' name, and then begin to act like it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then your world is being framed by the Word of God. Let's think about that. He says, uh, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Our lives are framed by the Word of God. God is the artist, the creator of our lives. He's the artist of our lives. And think of your life as a beautiful picture being painted within the frame, a frame. And that framework is God's Word. So as long as we stay within the Word of God, with our beliefs, and with our actions, then God, the artist, is drawing a beautiful picture of our lives within the framework of the Word of God. And faith is involved in staying within that framework. But if we decide to step out of the framework of God's Word, then you just got scribbling on the wall that doesn't amount to anything and doesn't look pretty and doesn't look beautiful and makes a mess of things. So we need to stay within the framework of God's Word. And that means that we're calling for things that we can't see, but knowing that God is a creator and He will create it according to His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody get excited about this. He calls the things... You know, we, if we go with the natural understanding all the time, we won't get into the realm of faith. We need to stay within the framework of faith. If we have to see it to believe it, that's not faith. That's operating in sense knowledge, with the sense knowledge. But if we want to obtain a good testimony, we need to be sure that we stay within the framework of the Word of God. You say, well, what does, that, what does that mean? Well, it means, for example, if we've uh, got a problem in the area of finances, for example, we have God's financial plan for us in the Scriptures, and it involves tithing and giving above tithe offerings as the Holy Spirit leads. So we say, okay, I'm going to stay within that framework. I don't understand how God's going to do it. Maybe a person's in debt, and they don't know how I'm going to get out of debt. But they say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give the first 10% to the Lord and I'm going to stay within the framework of His Word and I'm going to see Him paint a beautiful picture with my, my situation concerning my finances. And, you, and we believe God. And then uh, He does things that we could never dream of and blesses us in ways that we could never even think of because we're allowing faith to create something within that framework that was invisible to us before. But we knew it was there because of God's Word. Amen. Somebody get excited about this. Th this means we begin to apply God's principles. It means that if we're working in a job, and, uh, and you know, maybe, maybe we're in a, a work situation where the attitude of the other workers is not the greatest in the world. But we're deciding that we're going to do everything unto Jesus. Because that's what God's Word says. It says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So when the boss is not looking, we're still doing the best we can. Because you know why? We're not really working for the boss, although he's the boss. We're working for the boss, Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we know he's watching us all the time. And when we're going that extra mile 
on that job uh, and, and our natural employer doesn't see it, that's okay. We're operating within the framework of God's Word and we're applying integrity uh, uh, on the job. And God has a way of, seeing, of, of letting that natural boss know about it eventually. And He blesses His children that way and they get favor that way and get promotions because they're operating within the framework of God's Word concerning their career. Amen. So I'm, I'm saying we need to uh, apply the whole counsel of God's Word in every area of our lives and believe it that it's going to bear fruit, that we're sowing a seed every time we sow according to God's Word. Whether it's a seed of giving, whether it's a seed of helping someone, maybe a fellow employer that's gotten behind on, uh, in their work and uh, they're needing help and you go in there and help them even though in the natural you might think, well, that means they might get the promotion instead of me. I'm really doing the guy's work. Well, you, you just help them because you're walking in love and God has a way of sorting all these things out and seeing that you get favor when you have a pure heart and are walking in love toward your uh, uh, other fellow employees there in the uh, work place. Amen. I just use that as, as an example. Uh, our marriages, when we keep them, uh, you know, when, when the husband loves his wife the way Christ loves the church and uh, when the wife reveres and respects her husband, when that operates in a family, then that marriage is uh, within the framework of the Word of God and faith begins to build a wonderful uh, uh, marriage and uh, b build a wonderful family out of that type of love and that type of respect that is within the framework of the Word of God. Amen. All of this involves faith, trusting in God, walking in unconditional love, the husband uh, uh, walking in unconditional love, and the wife walking in unconditional love. Amen. You know, I'll tell you something. Uh, every husband, he, he really, his, God created men and, and women different. And you can, you know, if you don't believe that God created men and women different, I was walking with Shar. We were walking through a department store today. We like to go walking at the mall and wear a pedometer, and we try to get in at least three miles. And I, I was walking through a big department store, and there was like a half a floor devoted to women's pocketbooks or purses. I mean, all kinds of purses, just uh, everywhere you look. And uh, we walked through the men's department, and there's one little rack with standing straight up with wallets on it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that was it. That, you know, men, they, don't, they just grab a wallet. You know, it doesn't have to be, as long as it's functional and it'll work. But women are concerned. They, they want, uh, they're more concerned about fashion, really, uh, than us guys are for the most part. And you talking about shoes, you go through these department stores, you, you look at the women's shoe department. It'll take up another half a floor. And then you go through and you find the men's shoes and it's in a little corner of the department store. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, men and women are different. I used to minister, we used to minister a lot. Uh, uh, women's aglow, they allow a man speaker once a year, you know, in these chapters. And I don't know why, I guess the, I got called to be that speaker at a lot of women's aglow chapters when we were uh, traveling in itinerant preaching and evangelism. And... Uh, you go to those Women of Glow meetings. Anita's been involved in Women's of Glow. She knows what. And they, you go in, and they have these little frilly gifts and all, little ribbons and all tied over them. And, and uh, they, the, the women just, ooh, and ah oh, over those little frilly things, you know. And uh, I, I go in, they, sometimes they would make a mistake and hand one to me, and i said, say, what's this thing? I don't need this, you know. It's just men and women are so different. And guys, we need to recognize that women are different than we are, and women need to recognize that men are different than they are, and we complement each other and complete each other. Amen. And so, but, and each one is equally important. The, 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 the woman is no less important than the man in the marriage relationship, and the man is no less important than the woman, but they have different roles. It's just like we believe in uh, the Trinity, uh, uh, one God eternally existent in three persons.
God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, uh, the Son is, is just as, the, the person of the Son is just as much God as the Father is, and the Holy Spirit is just as much God as the Father and the Son are. You know, they have different roles in the Godhead. So it's the same with a husband uh, and a wife in a marriage. They're both equally important to God, but they have different roles. And so we complement each other. Amen. You know, I say this because you see in the media, on television, that you see this war of the sexes being promoted. Movies, and it's like the cool thing that husbands and wives are always fussing with each other and this, that. Now, that's not the way it should be. When we come to Jesus and we get born again, we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we are to uh, bring those marriages within the framework of God's Word and let faith operate with our love in the marriage relationship. And we'll see that marriage really blossom and bless our children and bless generations to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm taking more time. I'm just going to go. Let's just go to verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And if we really want to please God, we, we need to walk in faith. But to walk in faith, we also, and this is exciting, we need to understand that God is a rewarder. Amen. <laughs> we need to believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. One of the countries that we visited uh, in evangelism, we, I think we made four trips to Romania, and we made one trip just months after they had come out from under the tyranny of communism and the evil uh, dictatorship of Ceausescu, who was the dictator there for over 40 years. And the people had gotten their freedom. They had a, a revolution, I think it was 12,000 people that gave their lives in getting their freedom there. And uh, the people were so uh, excited about being free. And there was one man, we got invited to his home. He was the father of a pastor we were working with. and. We were going to have a meal at his house, and he had these uh, beautiful apple trees all in his yard, front and back yard, and it was a time where apples were on the trees, and he stood there, this elderly gentleman, and pulled an apple off the tree and uh, handed me one, then pulled one off for himself and took a bite out of it, and he said, it's so good to be able to pull an apple off of this apple tree and take a bite out of it. He said, if I had done what I just did, under Ceausescu's reign, I would have been imprisoned for it if it got back to them. And, you know, the land was deeded back to the people that it belonged to. And uh, we need to understand that uh, we need a system that believes in reward because God believes in reward. Amen. And we need to, we need to resist this move toward uh, socialism because it doesn't line up with faith and it doesn't line up with God's Word. God is a rewarder. And the wonderful thing about this nation, we need to have uh, equal opportunity and equal rights, and every person should have uh, the opportunity to be able to better themselves. But we need to be sure we don't take away the reward. Amen. Right. And that's uh, the, the thing that uh, a democratic capitalism and, and a republic like we have really lines up beautifully with the message of faith in the Word of God and uh, works with a God who believes in reward. Okay? So, but without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And so we need to understand God wants to reward us. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I share this because sometimes people get religious and they get in, in, into religion rather than relationship and they're not like that little girl standing on the upper floor of the building when she hears the voice of her daddy saying jump when the building's on fire and she knows she can jump because her daddy loves her. We need that kind of attitude toward God, knowing He loves us. He wants to help us. He's there for us. He wants to reward us, but He requires us to believe in Him. And that, that means we have to believe in Him even when we can't see it in the natural realm especially when we can't see it in the natural realm. It's a faith walk. We walk by faith and not by sight. But it's an, it's an exciting life. 
And being a believer is not a boring life. It's the most exciting life of all, believing in Jesus Christ and deciding I'm going to make that walk by faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I could just preach all night, but I'm going to stop uh, right there. And I, I just want us to bow our heads for a prayer. And Father, I just thank you for the word of God that does not return void. And I thank you for this word that's gone forth tonight. And Lord, I pray that all of us here and with the hearing of my voice will get excited about the faith walk and believing in you, Lord, and knowing that you've given us uh, a textbook of your word, the Bible, Lord, that we can frame our lives within this word and see your faith operate and see you build our lives and see you paint a beautiful picture with our lives, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to ask everyone with our eyes still closed in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God to look into our hearts. And uh, let's ask ourselves uh, this question. Have we really accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior? And if we're saying, uh, if you're saying within your heart, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure I've really done that. I know about God and I talk about God, but I'm not sure I've really entrusted my life to Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Let me tell you this. Uh, it's not about our works. God will receive us all just the way we are if we'll just come to Him and choose Him as our personal Lord and Savior and repent, turn to Him and turn away from the way we've been living. Then He will change us and He will empower us and we'll see ourselves being able to walk by faith and, and make that faith walk. Amen. But it's all about choice. Uh, God's not limited by our personal weaknesses. Matter of fact, if we'll just come to Him, He'll take those many times. We, I've seen Him do it in my life. He'll take the weakest areas of our life and turn them into the strongest areas if we'll just believe in Him and choose Him. And so what I'm asking tonight is, if you haven't chosen Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, it's all about accepting that the gospel truth that He took our judgment on the cross at Calvary and that uh, by accepting Him, we can have eternal life. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So uh, this is an opportunity to make that uh, ir irrevocable decision, one we never intend to go back on, to turn our lives over to Christ Jesus and surrender to Him. If that's what you want to do. I want you to raise your hand up high. If you're here, if you're watching by internet, lift your hand up. God sees you wherever you are, whether you're down the street here in Humble, Texas, or whether you're on the uh, other side of the earth. We're getting ready to pray. Let's all stand to our feet and let's say this prayer together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's say, an internet audience, say this with us, please. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. I open my heart up to your Son, Jesus Christ. And I say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I know now I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm forgiven. I have a new beginning. I have a new lease on life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You, let's give Jesus a hand clap. You may be seated. And uh, we just want to encourage the internet audience, if you said that prayer, please click on the uh, praise report button. And let us know so we can rejoice with the angels in heaven uh, over your salvation and give God the glory and also just pray uh, over your life. Also, if you have any prayer requests, there's a prayer request button you can click. We have six free books that uh, we want to uh, give you totally free of charge. If you'll click on the free books button, these are books that I've written. We give God the glory for them. And we just want to bless you in your Christian walk. And if you... This is for anyone watching, and not just those that just said that prayer for the first time, but anyone that wants those books. Just click on the free books button, and we'll uh, send you instructions on how you can get them uh, absolutely free 
of charge. God bless you, and uh, we're going to go off with the uh, sound portion of the service for just a few minutes, but the service is not over with yet. I do want to let you know that uh, this is the Lord's Glory Church. I'm Pastor Tom Battle. We're coming to you from Humble, Texas, which is an area near Houston, Texas. And if you're ever in this area or if you live in this area and don't have a home church, we'd love to meet you. Or if you'd like to come visit, we'd love to meet you. And so you can go to glorychurch.com and find out all the information you need to come visit us. Uh, also, we'd like to make you aware of Sunday International's websites. And this is the ministry that's been such a blessing to us, helping us with these, uh, streaming these services live uh, over the uh, Internet. And so, again, uh, uh, we're, we're not finished with the service yet, so stay with us. And if you need prayer, I'm going to stand down front here. And uh, if you need prayer, just come on up and we'll pray for you. And if you could turn my sound down.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. And, uh, did y'all get something out of this tonight? Oh, good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, go out and win the world for Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And God bless the internet audience as well. God's blessings on you. God's angels go with you. Amen.